Today I want to talk about a super common nutrient deficiency that causes mercury to build up in the brain. When this happens, you run the risk of increased oxidative stress and inflammation to your brain and nervous system, which down the line can lead to all kinds of problems, such as neurological issues and even an increased risk of tumors. So in this video, I will show you what this nutrient deficiency is, which foods to eat and supplements to take to avoid it, and how to generally improve your defenses against mercury and all kinds of heavy metals. Okay, first things first, what is mercury and why is it so toxic to our brain and body? Mercury is a naturally occurring heavy metal, so a very high dense metal. It exists in different forms, such as elemental, organic, and inorganic mercury. Now, the degree of toxicity varies between these different forms of mercury, but none of them are good for you. So you actually want to avoid it as much as possible. Basically, it increases the free radical burden and oxidative stress in your body. This comes with damage to tissue, organs, and even your DNA. Because certain types of mercury can pass the blood-brain barrier, it can also accumulate in the brain. So everything that I said before, the inflammation and tissue damage, also applies to your most important organ. Unfortunately, the symptoms of mercury toxicity are kind of vague. They include irritability, fatigue, behavioral changes, and headaches. So you probably won't link them to heavy metal toxicity. Another problem with mercury and other toxic metals such as cadmium or lead is that they also upset the delicate balance of essential minerals in your body. As you know, we all need some minerals to survive, such as calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium. Mercury can block their function and push them out of your body. While acute high doses of mercury can actually kill you, most people suffer from a different problem, which is chronic overexposure to low doses of mercury that slowly build up in your system. This can be from eating too much of certain fish types, such as tuna, Generally, larger fish are more contaminated than smaller fish. Or it could be because of mercury tooth fillings or from your job if you are exposed to working with a lot of mercury. What is also important to say is that we all have some exposure to mercury and you will find it in everyone. So this is definitely a big problem nowadays, but don't freak out about it either. I remember when I first read about mercury and all the other toxic minerals, I completely freaked out and was super scared of eating any type of fish, was super scared that this was inside of my body and would never get out. Please don't make the same mistake because you can become very paranoid with things. And I don't want that to happen either. Stressing yourself out about this isn't healthy either. Okay, but back to the main question of the video. What's this nutrient deficiency that makes mercury poisoning worse? It's selenium. Selenium binds to mercury and forms mercury selenide, which reduces the toxicity of it. The problem is that because selenium is then organically bound with mercury, it can no longer perform its most vital roles in your body, such as in your thyroid or to assist selenoproteins, which are proteins that rely on selenium to function properly. What that means is that mercury exposure increases your need for selenium and it also increases your risk of having a selenium deficiency. Unfortunately, if you already have a selenium deficiency, this also makes your body less able to fight and detox mercury. And selenium deficiency is actually fairly common, especially in Western Europe and certain parts of the US. That's because the soil there is very low in selenium, so the food that the people consume who live there is also low in selenium. In that case, you actively have to compensate for the low selenium and increase your intake either through certain foods or supplements. I will talk about that in a minute. Okay, so with these two actors, mercury on the one side and selenium on the other side, how do you solve the heavy metal problem? First of all, please realize that you will not get rid of mercury exposure 100%. There's just too much of it around. So it does make sense to reduce your intake, for example, by choosing the right type of fish. But what you have to focus on more is increasing your body's ability to detox mercury properly. Our body has certain biochemical pathways that it uses to eliminate mercury gently from your body. And what you want to do is improve the function of these pathways through natural nutrients that are required. This is a complex topic that I will explain in more detail in a different video. What you have to understand is that the rate of mercury accumulation is higher in most people 
than their rate of mercury excretion. That means over time, more and more will accumulate in their body. So our goal is to change this balance in favor of more mercury excretion. Please also know that blood tests aren't a good indicator here, neither of your mercury exposure, not of your mercury excretion. Because all these toxic metals are stored in your tissue, not in your blood. Your body actually pushes it out of the blood because the blood is always prioritized because it's the most important transport system that we have in our body. So any toxic substances in it will then be deposited into lesser important tissue, such as your fat tissue, your bones sometimes, or organs. Now, some practitioners, when they hear the words heavy metal toxicity, will recommend you take certain chelators. These can be DMPS or DMSA. They are drugs that bind to heavy metals and pull them out of your body. The problem is that they don't really discriminate between toxic metals and essential metals, such as zinc, copper, or also your minerals like calcium. That means they not only get rid of toxic metals, but they also deplete you of nutrients that your body needs. And over time, this can create quite drastic deficiencies. That's why I always favor some gentle diet changes and supplements that you can use to improve your body's own ability to get rid of these toxins. Let me now give you some quick tips that you can use today. We already talked about increasing your selenium intake. This can be very effective by itself. There is actually a study that found that natural selenium supplements increase urinary mercury excretion significantly. And this was within three months. In terms of selenium sources, you have the option to either go with natural foods or supplements. The best selenium food would be Brazil nuts. And the best supplement would be a yeast-based selenium supplement or one with selenomethionine where the selenium is bound to the amino acid methionine. In terms of Brazil nuts, you can eat one to two per day. And in terms of supplements, you want to go with a range from 50 micrograms to 200 micrograms per day max. That's because you can actually take in too much selenium and there is such a thing as selenium toxicity. Another very important aspect of heavy metal detox is to have sufficient sulfur in your body. This is especially vital for your liver function. You want to make sure to get your sulfur both from plant-based foods as well as from animal sources. Certain sulfur compounds are found in garlics, onion, or cruciferous vegetables. While cysteine and methionine, the sulfur-containing amino acids, are found primarily in meat and dairy. This is also why many vegetarians and vegans often have a hard time getting rid of heavy metals naturally. And lastly, you want to increase your zinc intake. Many people nowadays are zinc deficient, especially when it comes to the ratio of copper to zinc. Many people have too much copper in the tissue and not enough zinc. Zinc can actively block mercury and other heavy metals, and it also helps in the production of metallothionine which is a protein that binds around toxic metals and pulls them out of your body. It's super important for detox. Now, of course, these things were just general recommendations. If you personally think that you have a high mercury load or have symptoms associated with heavy metal toxicity, such as fatigue, brain fog, or high inflammation markers, then you might need a more sophisticated program. There are several different nutritional healing programs out there, and I have video reviews on pretty much all of them so I will link them in the description. I hope this video helped you, and like I said before, please don't freak out about mercury either. Many people, when they first learn of mercury toxicity, completely freak out because they read all these horror stories where this toxic metal destroyed someone else's life. That's what happened to me, and like I said before, it created some serious phobias. Please don't opt for very drastic approaches such as chelation therapy before informing yourself. I personally always prefer a natural approach where you only work with natural foods and some supplements. Fixing your body and improving your metabolism should be done gradually and slowly. That way you can more easily track your progress and if you have side effects then you can change things.